Welcome back to Funnel Across over this highly anticipated topic. We got the jersey to show. We got Jim Mills wearing it. The Raptors, Toronto Raptors. What's up in the NBA, Mark? What are we talking about? Let's go straight up to our favorite, you know, Double D, Debo. Double D. DeMar DeRozan with a 52-point performance. What are your thoughts about it? Did you guys watch the game? What are your thoughts overall <laughs> about the win and his performance? Oh, it was dope, man. Like, I actually worked that game, so I Ooh. felt the atmosphere. Like, the building was actually shaking. I never wow. felt it like that since the 2016 playoffs because, you know, the 2017 playoffs were... They were okay, yeah. but 2016, that's, that's how it felt like the building was shaken. All the fans rejoiced together, and it was just crazy even to see that, you know, new year, new Debo. You know? <laughs> oh, and and they got pizza, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Oh, my exactly. God. You play, <laughs> pizza? And it was the first overtime game of the season, too. Yeah. Which makes yeah. it more extra exciting. Wow. Career high. Do you feel well. like um, it's not just his career high, too, but it's also franchise high for the Raptors? Ooh, Do you actually. feel like this is something that, you know, was meant to happen, at, bound to happen at some point? Yeah. Or? Yeah, definitely. It, did it feel like it was the right time to really happen? It was fitting. New yeah. Year. Like, the first day of the new year, that's and fitting. Just, like, yeah. it, there's no way Terrence Ross is going to be sitting up there. <laughs> 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 how crazy was that? Yeah. Like, <laughs> how crazy was that? That the highest point scored for, uh, like, a it's Raptor? Carter was, and Terrence Ross. Yeah. Terrence Ross with 51 points. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, he's just, he has that drive in him. That he, you know, yeah. eventually he's gonna break that. And yeah. it was the perfect game. Like I said, it was against the Bucks, who you know we had a tough first it went round to matchup. That too. Yeah, yeah, like Giannis is always tough to face. So yeah. like he just like I've been calling it for years now. He's like a slowly becoming a mini Kobe, like yeah. mm. in terms of his mid range. And once he gets that three, which is slowly getting slow. it now consistently, thirty six percent or something like that. Yeah. That's yeah. that's a crazy yeah. improvement. Yeah. Oh, and then I want to hear from you guys. What's been the most impressive part of his game? That you never thought he had, like, and he's starting, and that he's starting to do now the past mm. few games because. Uh, you guys are gonna say like most people are gonna see the threes, but I'm actually gonna say the assists. Yeah. I was gonna say that. He's too. at a career high five point something. Oh, basically let's round it up to six uh, assists a game. Yeah, and which is more than uh, Irving. If we don't yeah, know that. so that's, <laughs> yeah, which is crazy. That's, that shows his unselfishness, yeah. but but it, it also shows that he's like maturing as a player like it's not sometimes not all, all about him yeah. he knows he needs to make the plays he's getting the double teams now like if you've been watching yeah, the games yeah. he knows how to make that double team pass mm -hmm. so that i would say assist is the most impressive game uh, part of his game this year what i love the most is that he's actually buying into the ball movement system because you would see him play iso ball season after season mm -hmm. but yeah. this year him larry they're both sharing the ball distributing it it's just beautiful basketball i think <laughs> to be honest yeah it's great i've been yeah. impressed about his three like I never thought like he never he, ever, he was ever gonna adopt it. Or <laughs> like, I never thought he was ever not three. Makes you scratch your head, yeah. you know. Because I've always thought your game is your game, right? Like no matter you know. That's why I've always felt about Westbrook. Like, your game is your game, Westbrook. Mm -hmm. As much as he tried to like play differently before to get everyone accumulated, like uh, Anthony and Paul George, his game is his game, and now he's starting to play more like he was playing last year, mm -hmm. and now they're playing better. And I felt like that's you know. The same way with Demar, and, and, and I never thought he was gonna evolve as a three-point shooter, but he's starting to really embrace it. And I think you know we have to give props to uh, Dwayne Casey for designing, you know, <laughs> yeah. to actually having these players adopt a new system and a new way to play. And uh, you know, yeah. Kyle, shout out to him for winning Coach of the Month, right? Oh, yeah. Because yeah. of that, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah well, I just want to take credit for him too. Like like you said, he sticks to his game. Like if you see yeah. the threes he takes, yeah. he doesn't take a lot in the fourth quarter. Yeah. So he knows that's when he his team needs him to score, and yeah. he sticks to that. Mid range, post up, fade away. Like that's his. That's his. You know, bread and butter in the that's, sense. That's exactly. So I like. Yeah. I give him credit for sticking to his. You know, his guns. So. Yeah. Well, you know, let's uh, let's talk about more about not just the Marderosen, but also the the rest of the players in in in, in Toronto mm -hmm. that are that are doing the little stuff or like have sacrificed their game for the benefit of you know having this style of offense. It's just free flowing, spacing, and a lot of threes. Like, who are the players that you feel like have done? those little things or have done a lot of sacrifice that we haven't really given, you know, much appreciation. Easily OG and an OB. Yeah. Easily. Ooh, sleeper. Sleeper. I mean, yeah. rookie, no one expected him to start. He's yeah, a rookie yeah. starting on a, you know, playoff caliber team. Yeah. And he's playing, you know, I think possibly he could be the next Kawhi Leonard. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh, that's Ooh, a big that's a, It's a big reach, but it's a big I'm not going against that, but it's a crazy part is that 
if people, uh, people didn't know that because of his injury, he was supposed to be a top 10, top, top 50. He's a yeah. At least yeah. it was a lottery, lottery for exactly. sure. If it wasn't for his injury that, that caused him to miss a lot of games. So it went, his stock went down to like, you know, mid, which was, you know, yeah. when we got him at 20 and it was a steal. Yeah. Right? So like, I'm and not... People going. do say that he's a steal of the draft. Yeah. Like yeah. he is like performing. Yeah. He's actually... Exactly. Like he's up there with Kyle Kuzma in terms of the steal. Yeah. Right? yeah. So. Yeah. But it's just that obviously Kuzma gets b bigger exposure because he plays yeah. for the Lakers. 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 Yeah. And he scores. <laughs> He scores. Yeah, so yeah. He scores score, yeah. How about you know any other players uh, that you guys wanna? Actually, like this is like a, a player you, you might guys say like what? Like yeah. I would I would say the best guy off the bench yeah. is Pascal Siakam. Yeah, no, I agree. I think you know, you know I was the one rooting to start him over JV. Yeah. Like I was telling people start Ibaka <laughs> yeah. at the five and have him. Yeah, like his yeah. skills. Like yeah. he, it's oh. not not even like he, stuff he does is not you don't see it in the box score. Yeah. He knows yeah. how to switch off pick and rolls. And, and he can defend. He's there. He's there positions. for like the yeah. hustle plays. Yeah. And the blocks and the steals and uh, I like he runs the floor like Larry's always he's, looking he, up ahead exactly. see if he's running and he gives him that lob. Yeah, yeah. So Siakam is without him I don't think the bench will be as good okay. without him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. Is there any player in mind that also you know there's a lot of players that are actually playing well for them so yeah a lot. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Let's say let's see who's not playing well. Let's yeah. Talk about oh. <laughs> I think the only, yeah, the only player that, uh, yeah. Go Daddy. What's the is, song? What's is, the song? So the, now that no we've problem. Seen, now that we've seen <laughs> no how they're playing. It's a problem. <laughs> yeah, it's a problem. <laughs> what, should they, what should they do with Norman Powell? Like, mm. it feels like he's, feels like he's out of the rotation. Yeah. CJ yeah. Miles is taking over the uh, the backup forward uh, guard position. The Lawn Wright's playing out of his mind. Fred Van Fleet. Van Fleet. Van Fleet. <laughs> Steady Fred. Oh, yeah. man. So they have a bench that's like that in sync that doesn't include Norman Powell. So what should they do with, you know, with him? It's tough. He's that is tough. They just signed him for a $42 million they, yeah. deal. He's in a bubble because even if you want to trade him, you can't trade him to the offseason because of that extension. Yeah. So, like, I watched last night's game. He was not oh. even in the rotation at all until, like, oh. it was garbage minutes. No, yeah. but even when he played, it was, it was, yeah. it was terrible. <laughs> I just feel like he's a player that... He forces things to. If you guys watch, he forces a lot of his offense a lot. Like he should just let his defense play first. Yeah. That's how he thrived in the playoffs. Well, yeah, he was playing year. defense first. Yeah. Then his offense came. So yeah. I don't know what's what's up with him this year. I just feel like he doesn't have a position that we can clearly define what his position is because he he, he try, he's not a very good playmaker. He, they try to make him that you know that second guy like the guy that comes off the bench and runs the offense. He's not a very good, you know, his size, he's not big enough to play the yeah, he's forward. Undersized, yeah. He's undersized, so it's hard to really give him a position. And if you don't have a position in NBA, you don't have a role, you don't know really what you can do, right? Yeah. Yeah. right? So, I mean, let's also give a shout out to players like Ibaka. Now he's starting to figure it out. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he's, and he was the key signing too. Like I've always tell people like, this guy can, you know, shoot threes and defend and block shots. And, and, and he can move off pick and rolls which not a lot of big guys can do of his size. So then what, you know, to, to finish the game for them, how do you guys think what's the best lineup for them to finish? Now that, Ooh. you know, you got a guy like Ibaka that can play the four or five, they can play small now. It's not. It's no secret that JV doesn't play in the fourth quarter. Yeah. So I insert Ibaka at the five there. Yeah. yeah. So then, uh, what should he do with JV? Like, what's his trade value? What's his? Oh, I don't even. Marcus know. Gasol. <laughs> I mean, that's hard to you know. Yeah. I mean. They're probably going to do something about it by tread that deadline. But I hope, you know, they yeah. do something about it because I don't think JV fits them right now. Definitely not. He Which, just plays the first quarter. Yeah. And then like, the end <laughs> and then the <laughs> third quarter. And then, That's his role. Yeah. 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 The first quarter. Yeah. Like, even Jakob, you could tell, like, yeah. he play, oh, outplays him. Outplays him. Yeah. yeah, it's true. Let's leave it now for the final question of mm -hmm. this, you know, what's up in the NBA. Yeah. Where does DeMar DeRozan stack up in the all-time Raptor list? Where do you <sighs> see him? Oh, um, I see him at the top, to be right. honest. I mean, really? So give me oh, the top five the, Raptors right now. Give me the top ooh, five Raptors. The top? Man, the top number five? one? I would have to say Debo. Yeah. Lowry. Yeah. Lowry? Vince Lowry? Yes. Vince Carter? What's no, no. Oh, oh, you mean in order? Or? Like the top oh, okay. five all time. Like, okay, oh, no. Say Debo, VC. Yeah. Okay. Um, Lowry. Yeah. T-Mac. Ooh, okay, and, yeah, because he was a young T-Mac, yeah. And then I would have to say either... Chris and uh, yeah, Chris Bosh. Chris Bosh. Chris, oh. Chris, you write Chris yeah. Bosh behind T Mac oh. only yeah. before his pro like. I don't know about T Mac. Uh, I'm gonna piggyback uh, that. I'm gonna have to yeah. say Demar is the best Raptor. The best Raptor. So what's your top VC, five? What's your top five right now? It's gonna be Demar, yeah. VC. I would even say Chris Bosh a third. Wow. He was that good. Yeah, yeah. he was. He was, a, he, was awesome. he was a franchise player for a while. Yeah. Kyle Lowry at four, and I'm gonna say 
maybe Antonio Davis. Okay, that's at five. Was, uh, yeah, that's good too. That's not bad. Yeah. What about your top? Uh, your worst? Your worst five of the round? <laughs> worst five? Oh, <laughs> oh, worst, worst, oh my god! Worst five. Worst five. That, I could go on and on. <laughs> yeah, like Turkoglu. Ooh, you could put Roko Ugo. I forgot about Turkoglu. Roko Ugo. Oh my god! Yeah. Who else? Jason Capono. Like, oh man. Yo, three point champion over there. Yeah, Shouts to that man. Yeah. That brought up some uh, memories. All right. Oh shoot. It was like we're done. Oh my gosh. Okay. Uh, any shout outs you'd like to give before we end the show? Um, shout out to the Sacramento Kings 2020. <laughs> it's our year. Oh. Sac proud. We're going to draft. We're, We're going to do some draft picks again. Hey, man. Michael Porter next year. Call it. No. <laughs> and trade him after. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah. Jamil, anything you'd like to say? Yeah, just uh, fun to have me back here in a crossover. But uh, shout out to uh, Ali, who's sitting over there somewhere. That too. But, yeah. That too. <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> Shout out to Clyde, you know, shout, shout out, you know, Toronto, that's for the shirt. Paper Crane, Max is what's up. Love your food. <laughs> Wait. Mm. Okay. Sarap, sarap. I, I, like the, I like your fried chicken <laughs> and your lumpia. That's the uh, Ooh. Ooh, oh, lumpia power. All right. All right. Uh, thanks for joining us and stay balling. <laughs>